Five ways to ensure your content is socially shareable. Want to build a big and highly effective links profile? The best way to do that is to let your audience build it for you. That way, it will look inherently natural to Google, and it will proliferate through real networks of people with similar interests. But just how do you go about writing a post if you want to ensure people will share it? You're in the right place. In this presentation, we're going to explore exactly that. 1. Build a resource. If you can create a comprehensive resource that teaches a subject, then you will get links from people who want to teach a topic. This is often referred to as a resource post. And the idea is that when someone is discussing how to do something, or when someone asks a community how to go about something, your link will then be referenced as a starting point. It takes time and effort, but these can be perfect link bait. 2. Shareable titles. Speaking of bait, the right title can do a lot for your performance on social media and increase your chances of getting shared. This is, of course, what is known as clickbait, but there's no need to go that far. Just make sure that your title captures attention and is interesting enough to gain some clicks on its own strengths. 3. Write for a specific person. Remember, social media is primarily about communication. That is to say that we post on Facebook or Twitter usually because we want to say something to someone or about ourselves. For example, one reason we often share things on Facebook is because of what that says about us. We share things that we associate with, to tell our friends a little about who we are. The other reason we share is because we think someone will like a specific post, and we want to let them know we're thinking of them. In both cases, it pays to write for a specific person, and not be so broad that you don't appeal to anyone in particular. 4. Be a little opinionated. People love to argue on Facebook and Twitter, and the sad fact is that controversy sells. Don't be obscene, of course, but don't be afraid to be a little controversial either. If someone shares your post because they disagree with it, that's still a share. 5. Add social sharing buttons. And finally, the easiest way of all is just to include social sharing buttons on your site. Let visitors share your content with one click, and they'll be much more likely to do just that. What is retargeting, and why should you be using it? As you begin to become more experienced in Internet marketing, and you start to explore more options, you'll begin to discover some more advanced techniques and strategies that you can use to accelerate your growth. One of the most successful of these is retargeting. This can be highly effective if you know how to use it. And in this presentation, that's precisely what you're going to learn. What is retargeting? Retargeting is a term that is usually used in relation to PPC, pay-per-click advertising. That means Facebook ads, and it means Google AdWords and AdSense. Both these platforms allow you to target whom you show your ads to, ensuring that you're not paying to display ads to people who are unlikely to be interested in visiting your page or buying from you. Facebook does this by letting you target by demographic and by interest, based on the information that the user gave the network. Google, meanwhile, does this by letting you target based on search term, from which you can infer interest and intent. Retargeting takes this one step further. By using cookies stored on the visitor's computer, it allows you to show ads only to visitors who have previously been to your site and previously looked at your products. This, in turn, greatly increases the likelihood that they might be interested in what you have to sell. Why it works. Retargeting is very powerful because people who have been to your page before and looked at your products were possibly considering buying from you. You can not only choose to show your ad to previous visitors to your site, but to previous visitors of specific pages. If you have ever thought of buying something, you may have found that you ended up talking yourself out of it. Perhaps you didn't have the money, or perhaps you didn't really need it. Either way, logic prevailed over impulse and emotion. But then imagine it's evening. 
You're feeling tired and your resolve is weak. Maybe you've had a hard day and you feel like you deserve a treat. And then you see that same product you considered appear. Maybe now with a limited time discount. Did you know that we're statistically more likely to buy when we're tired? You can imagine the impact this could have. And right there is the power of remarketing.